I'm going to start recording now. Clever Briny, just missed so out. I'm recording as well. I did. You up? Thank you, Abby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we, there's loads of participants, and we got the chat box, but also we got the Q and A box. And it would be great if you, uh, anyone wants to ask any questions, just type them in there, and then maybe we can get some people in. <laughs> so they can come in and ask the questions um but yeah please do this is all about uh us collaborating and communicating so it's not just about me and abby even though it may seem it uh we want your input and your tips and your questions about um how you're dealing with your mental health during lockdown and now so abby i wanted to ask you that first how are you finding lockdown and your mental health um I think at first I made a little bit of a deal with myself in lockdown 1.0, not 2.0, um, to try and live every day. Because if I tried to look into the future, I was just going to completely freak out. So the problem with that now, having seven months down the line, is I'm I'm great at living every day as it comes and not really trying, you know, really trying not to focus on. Christmas and next year and da, da 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 but it also I think has kind of shot myself in the foot a little bit because I now I'm feeling like I'm breezing through life a little bit and my anxiety about lockdown is non-existent but my anxiety about everything else and particularly work because I I'm in my office now and I just stay here all day and sometimes all night because there are no boundaries anymore with work so that's that's been a big thing it's Massively. interesting isn't it? because I I need to be really honest and say that when lockdown was announced back in March I was sort of relieved mm -hmm. um and, and 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 not relieved obviously no one wants to be in a pandemic and no one <laughs> wants the whole country or the world to be locked down but there was a part of me and I now recognize what that part was and that part was my uh my ja Jareth the Goblin King as I call my yeah. husband and all my demons although I hate that phrase in my head um so Jareth as I call my OCD or my alcoholism um has a voice very uh similar to my own in fact it's very difficult to distinguish betwixt the two sometimes and so when lockdown was announced I thought oh thank god thank god I don't have to see anyone I don't yeah. have to go anywhere I don't have to you know I don't have to interact with people and connect with people anymore I can just stay in my That's own exactly place. like me my and inner hermit loves this yeah and the, but it was really important <laughs> for me to recognize that that really wasn't me that was Jareth because that was Jareth yeah. able to like basically move to the center of my brain unpack his things and set up oh yeah. you know and anything that forces isolation and obviously is 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 just very bad for, i don't know about it i can only speak for myself but it is you know in the short term sometimes we do all need to cut off from the world and we do all need to um you know stop stop and you know shut down for a bit but i think the longer it goes on the more i've realized jareth has got a bit louder and louder and louder yeah. and he's so good at mimicking he's like a ventriloquist i'm like oh that sounds like me <laughs> i don't want to go up get up and go for a run today i'm just gonna stay in bed or you know and it's like oh shit no sorry if i swear everyone we should put an explicit thing and I realise it's Jareth. You know? Yeah. So, no, um, my my inner hermit has loved it, and it's actually taken my husband to say to me, you know, on the odd occasion before this lockdown, when my girlfriends were meeting up, he'd say, "You're going," and I'd be like, "No, no, no," but it'd be so much easier just to stay at home because I don't have anxiety when I don't speak to people. So it's it's nicer for me, and it's safe, and it's warm. And he was like, "Get out." <laughs> Now, Avi, I want to talk. You've got your mental health mates T-shirt on, which I'm very impressed by. I've got my um, I've got my Mad Girl T-shirt, <laughs> uh, which was a collaboration we did with Mental Health Mates last year. Um, Abby, tell me, how did you get involved with Mental Health Mates, and why did you decide to do okay. it? Okay, so um, I got involved because I'd read The Wrong Knickers and Mad Girl, listened to Mad World podcast. And I thought, I really, really want to get involved. And I looked around and there was Lena's group in Bucks. And Hi, Lena. Was, I know she's here. She is here. And there was Emma's group in Newbury. And I'm slap bang in between. And I was like, this is crazy. There's, you know, Reading is a big town. It's almost a city. And so I got in touch with Jess and said, 
what do I do? And that was how it was born. And that was May last year. So Jess is, um, the, is the woman behind the scenes of Mental Health Mates who holds everything together. So what I love about this is that is connections and someone's just popped up in the chat. Justine Mao, hello from, and I apologize if I, if I pronounce this completely incorrectly, Justine. Hello from Hororata in the oh, South yay. Island of New Zealand. And Justine says, I loved our lockdown and my anxiety vanished. I was in a safe, happy bubble and I found that my confidence grew. And that, and um, she started a mental health mates group in New Zealand. Um, and she has, oh, uh, lucky, lucky Justine with just Jacinda, Jacinda. Yeah. Um, but um, how have you, tell me, can, if you don't mind, will you talk us through a bit about what your mental health issues were and what you know and, and and your personal backstory i suppose yeah of course um so mine's been kind of a lifelong thing of anxiety where i've had social anxiety i had postnatal depression which was probably more postnatal anxiety um i don't know where it properly stemmed from but i had a horrible case at school where i was bullied and my mum's always suffered from mental health problems my granny so I don't know it could be it could be genetic um but mine massively manifested after I had my son 11 years ago and I know it sounds really cliched but I literally walked around for two years with a black cloud over my head and I would go out walking on my own I hated the mother and baby groups because I felt like an imposter and I felt like nobody liked me nobody wanted me around um and then I just kind of, I think it got to a head when I think, Bryony, you and I have talked about this, actually, when I honestly thought I was going to kill my son. And it wasn't, it wasn't a, a, an actual doing. It was all in my head. I thought, oh, my God, what if I kill him? What if I kill him? Oh, my God. But yeah. So common with them, um, uh, with postnatal obsessive compulsive disorder, which is, yeah. a, which is, <clears throat> it's very interesting because there's lots of people. Did you, had you experienced obsessive compulsive disorder before you had your child? So this no. is thing. Lots of women um, will experience, uh, so there's a, there's a statistic that most of us, if we're going to experience a mental health issue, will experience 70%, of, I can't off the top of my head, 60 or 70% yeah. will have experienced it by the time we're 14. But actually, in terms of maternity, there's a lot of, um, these things can just come on. Oh, know? God, yeah. So, there's a OCD is is a really common um, illness to experience as as a mother, a new mother, and I suppose new fathers as well. And it is about the same. And, and the thing I describe OCD is, and the thing that's really helped me is, it's our brain's way, it, our brain's trying to keep us safe and keep, but but mm. it's inspiring basically. So those yeah. harmful those thoughts, those intrusive thoughts in our heads. What if I do this? Is our are us trying to kind of um, check that we are super, 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 super safe and we're not going to yeah. do anything, but it's- so we're on top of everything. Yeah, it's incredibly, um, incredibly distressing. Um, mm. Sorry, so carry on. Yeah, so it got to a point where I actually opened up to my husband because it got, I just was in such a mess because he was going out to work every day and I was stuck at home and I'd, I, didn't want to be stuck at home I didn't want to be a stay-at-home mum that was my own decision I was much more productive at working in an office um, and it got to a point where I actually opened up to him and he said you've got to do something about this so I went to see my GP and um, had a chat with her she was amazing and um, she said well try some antidepressants which I did and I'm still on them and that's probably about eight, eight nine years now and I tried to come off them, but I've actually, you know, I like them. I like the person it makes me. Um, I've done loads of other work on myself with it as well. I've done CBT. I've just finished an NLP course because I just can't stop learning about everything to do with mental health now because I love it so much. Um, and yeah, and I've just, I've done constantly learning about it, constantly trying different things and also talking about it. And so I do harp on. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's really interesting because, you know, my mental health mates for me was about trying to take a negative and turn it into a positive, yeah. which it sounds like you do. Tell me, what have you, what, because obviously you give a huge amount to your local community, Abby, through mm. setting up the local mental health mates. And, you know, I'm so grateful for what you do. And, you know, but what do you get from it? Because if there's anyone here, 
listening tonight who is thinking isn't sure mm, mm. because we, you know our aim for um 2021 uh is you know we want to grow mental health mates and we want there to be one in every city and you know town and you know what what do you get out of it how does it help you um i think talking to like-minded people is an obvious one but mm. the thing i love about it is that i've a got some great new friends that i didn't have a year and a half ago people that understand me and get me um but also just the fact that and i know it sounds naff but we can have conversations as we're walking about your medication or about a panic attack like you were saying oh they're a nice pair of gazelles and it is just normalizing it and i also I, I always said when I started it, I said, if I can just help one person by me talking about mental health issues and all of my problems, then I've done my job. And I think I've done it a few times over now, if I dare say. Um, but it is, it's just, I think, just normalising the conversation, taking away the stigma and making it, you know, just so that everybody can make it accessible and have that conversation if they want to. And, and Abby, how long have you been running the Mental Health Mates Reading Group? Uh, since May last year. Okay. So, so just over 18 months, not massively long. It's quite a long time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, we've got a few questions coming in. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, Keris wants to say uh, just a bit of appreciation for Lena here, most wonderful support, supportive person ever. And Lena is in Bucks, is that? Is yeah. That, yeah, okay. Um, uh, God, there's loads of messages coming in. Um, now, uh, um, there's a message. So here, right, I've got some coming in chat, some coming in Q&A. Um, yeah. Someone's asked, and I don't know their name, um, it's just a phone number, but saying that they fell apart during lockdown and was really struggling with anxiety and depression. This caused huge insecurity and lots of arguments with my partner. <clears throat> really sorry about that um he's currently in the 12-step program and unfortunately our arguments have pushed him back into his withdrawn place um and it, so things are it's causing my anxiety to flare up again i need a break from my thinking and my fear any advice on managing anxiety abby what's your advice for managing? Oh, okay so um i use a lot so i've just finished doing talking therapies because my anxiety about work and other stuff kind of flared up a couple of few months ago so I've just finished doing that and on there they talk a lot about CBT cycles which massively helps me so um, you look at what you're worrying about or what, what the issue is and then you look at the worst case scenario the best case scenario and actually what the reality is and that hugely helps the other thing that helps is the um, is two things actually over worry is worry the worry tree and how you work out whether you can do something about it and if you can then address it and if you can't let it go which is way easier said than done um, and also worry time which is something I learned years ago is just say to yourself don't think about it now you're not allowed to think about it now you think about it at eight o'clock tonight it's like having I was told it's like having a puppy that constantly wants feeding or playing or the ball thrown and you go not now not now not now and you keep pushing it and eventually apparently not quite there for me yet um it will you will just forget that your worry time is at eight o'clock and you're just pushing them away i also find that for me one of the things that has been really helpful i spend a lot of time wishing i wasn't anxious and wishing i wasn't oh, God, yeah. a warrior and for me just accepting that there are millions of different types of people out there and yeah. i happen to be one of those ones that worries a lot about things and is sensitive and the and that the payoff you know the flip side of that is that i am caring and what you know whatever yeah. and instead of and and just realizing that that's how I react to lots of things in life if I'm tired if I've got a lot going on I worry I feel anxious you know and I think the thing you said about the worry tree like um worrying is I, I think the one of the most helpful things that anyone ever said to me a dear friend of mine who has a secondary bowel uh, breast cancer and she said to me she constantly has to remind herself worrying does not control the outcome yeah that thing you said about that thing you said about what can you control what can't you control unfortunately most of those things in the world life we can't control do you know what I mean? yeah I yeah 
interesting that you mentioned that the the person that proposed this question mentioned the 12 step program and i find those incredibly helpful and the, the serenity prayer which is used in so many 12 step or all 12 step programs is um grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change the courage to change the things i can and the wisdom to know the difference and i think sitting down and saying well what can i what can i do to make this situation different and it may be that it's like right i'm gonna try and get a good night's sleep tonight or i'm gonna hugely uh, important cut down on caffeine and i think that's the other thing mm. to talk about with anxiety is that and, and any kind of mental health crisis is i get asked quite a lot people come to me and they're like what about mindfulness and meditation mm. and i'm like well let's stop here like asking someone who's in an anxiety phase like a, or a you know a period of uh a, a depressive episode or you know in a period of extreme anxiety asking them to get into mental mental meditation and mindfulness is like asking someone in a lead suit to go for a swim you know it's yeah. not it's not actually helpful now mindfulness and meditation i think are fantastic things for when you get to a place of equilibrium to keep you there but i think when you're we need to get what you need to strip things right back to the basics and i'm thinking about and i know it's really dull but you know i try i've experimented with all sorts of ways of trying to improve my mental health i've done the drugs i've done the alcohol i've done everything i've tried for that for it not to be a boring answer and i'm afraid it is mm. you eat regularly you don't eat shit you don't drink you know you, you cut out alcohol if you can i know that again is easier said than done you cut down your cafe and get some structure in your life like that yeah. routine up. is hugely yeah for me it's definitely the sleep um i stopped drinking in january and that has given me benefits no end including a little bit of weight loss which is nice despite eating chocolate constantly um but yeah so routine sleep um and an exercise exercise is a big one for me it, you know the endorphins and everything else really really helps lena's just said um distraction techniques as well can work um uh, also some uh, rachel i think in bristol has spoken about her bed of nails one second everyone. oh yeah you've got one haven't you this everyone i'm in my bedroom right now because i don't have an office i don't know if you can see this is my bed of nails and it's basically look spikes and you lie down on it and let me tell you something it's like a it's like it's like better than sex is it not hurt do you have to get used to it it hurts it's a bed of nails there, <laughs> you can get them on no it's really weird but you get the endorphin rush you get and you kind of build up so you could do one minute on it one night two minutes you know build up and then before you know it i fall asleep on it um, and they're not that expensive. You can get them on. Um, you can get them. You can get some really posh ones that are mm. lovely. But they all did the same thing. Go on Amazon. You can get them for sort of twelve quid. But there are lots of things out there, and I love that people are sending, um, are sending, uh, are sending through. I can't keep up with all the stuff in the chat now. Yeah, there's so much going Let's on. To the Q and A. Um, there's a really one of the first questions that was asked was. Do you feel pressure to be extra produ productive in lockdown? Um, Abby, do you? Um, I, I think I certainly did at the beginning of lockdown, particularly with work and also with everybody going on about, what have you learned or what are you learning? I'm learning the piano, don't you know? And my children are so wonderful and marvellous and it's all lovely, lovely. And I was going, shit, I'm trying to multitask. I'm homeschooling my son. I'm trying to work. I'm trying to do the washing. I'm trying to clean the house. So yes, at first, but I kind of have given in now and I just go, sod it. You know, the house, I think I live pretty much in a haunted house now because of the cobwebs. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> so there's just, uh, so many questions. And I think we should go through them because mm. that's um, uh, oh, Annalise says, what do you think of weighted, weighted blankets? And what I have to say to you, Annalise, is yes. Now, someone mentioned in the chat restless legs. I find them on, on my, which, which keeps me awake. And it is a stress mm. response. My body's just like, oh, I'll just do the river dance at one in the morning. The weighted blankets really help but they're they are quite expensive and i you know i don't like i i uh i i wouldn't you know i'd, I'd look to other things first um right so we've got um um uh right here we go i'm gonna go through them sorry right. camilla 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 
Thank you both for hosting this. That's okay, Camilla. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Our question is, I live alone and feel really disconnected, lonely and quite hopeless at the moment, especially when I compare myself to others my age with family and lots of friends. Any tips? Camilla, that's the first thing you need to not do is compare yourself to other mm. people. Like, I'm going to go on my spiel now. Camilla, you are a miracle. Each and every one of us on this webinar are miracles. The chances of any of us being conceived and existing are like minuscule. I do this spiel quite a lot and I think it's really important to remember. So if our biological parents uh, had, to put it bluntly, um, had sex uh, a second earlier or a second later, or your dad has said, your biological father had said something that pissed your biological mother off, you could be a whole different person, okay? So millions of sperm are released into the, into the uh, woman's body. And because we don't want any old uh, crap, fertilizing an egg if there is an egg there by the way because it's only really there for uh one day of each calendar month if uh because we don't want any old one of the sperms it starts to release uh, acid to kill the weak sperm go die 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 and then the sperm has to go on a journey which is like the equivalent of a sperm iron man uphill right so not even on flat pasture right and then it has to like punch through membranes that are like us having to punch through bedroom walls, like really difficult. And then it gets to the fallopian tubes. Does it go left? Does it go right? Oh no, if there's one there, half of them choose to go right, uh, uh, they're gone. That's all these different versions of you are gone. And then the other half go to the fallopian tube where there is the egg, if the egg is there. And out, <laughs> sorry about this everyone. <laughs> and what happens? The, the egg is being guarded by white blood cells that are basically behaving like nightclub bouncers like you ain't coming in so for the sperm to fertilize the egg and create the embryo that becomes you is quite incredible and not just that because we know about miscarriage and and all sorts of other things for, for you to thrive in your biological mother's womb and then to be born and the day we are born as doctors tell us is perhaps the most dangerous day of our lives and then to live every day every single day until this one where we're sitting here in this webinar talking to each other camilla the universe really wants you here and it really wants you to be you it doesn't want you to be your friends with families lots of lots of how who knows how many friends they have and you know it wants you to be you and you are supposed to be here so go out and set the world a lot you know just by being you you know and it may be hard right now and lonely and disconnected but you are going to take from this experience, something that is gonna hold you in such amazing stead in the future. And that brings me kind of roundly to what I was gonna talk about, which was lockdown and how I've realized at the beginning of it that all of the things that I thought were failures and flaws about myself previously, I realized going into lockdowns were kind of superpowers. And I'm talking about the, the mental health issues that I experienced, which at the time felt awful and the loneliness and the hopelessness that Camilla talks about. And I realized then going into lockdown that I found it all a bit of a doddle, as did most of the people I knew who'd mm. experienced mental health issues. And it was the people that hadn't experienced that hardship who really struggled with it. So what I'm trying to say is that things that you think are really bad and lonely right now, you don't know what the universe has thrown that to you for, like, and how that you're gonna draw on the strength and resources you're finding from this time in the future, yeah? So I hope that that's not, Camilla's like, that didn't answer my question at all. You're a nightmare. Um... <laughs> I was just gonna say as well that, um... Camilla, I think also that few of us are doing Zoom sessions, catch up sessions, and I'm doing them weekly. So whether you live wherever you live, it doesn't matter, but you're always welcome to come and have a chat. We just sit and have a coffee every week and just natter about nonsense, but it is still stay, staying connected. So, and I know a few others are doing it as well. So yeah. just, just get in touch with one of us. Um, that's a, it, Ellie asks, do the groups accommodate different types of mental illness? I suffer from anxiety, but I have an acquaintance with a history of substance abuse and psychosis, which are not socially acceptable. 
do you think the groups will be suitable for them yes we uh, anyone can come mm. um as, <laughs> it's a it's a place yeah it's for a walk and talk without fear of judgment the only people we don't allow are judgmental people ellie exactly. so come and your friends can come and yeah and and you know mental health issues covers i've always said it covers everything Just in the same way that physical health covers everything from the common cold through to cancer and beyond mental health um covers everything from anxiety through to psychosis and beyond and i think it's really important that we let people with the more severe mental illnesses which as any um points you know hints at are uh, they get less attention in the media and they can often feel like they are left out uh of the mental health conversation but they are not left out of the mental health mates conversation no, no. um god there's so many messages mm. right uh da, 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 da. right um uh are there any groups in southwest london i think if anyone wants to know where the groups are you just go onto the website mentalhealthmates.co.uk and um and then there will be that that lists um that lists all of the the, the the walks there are but then hannah asks what can we do if there are no walks in our area my mental health and my eating disorder have suffered hugely over lockdown, resulting in a recent hospital admission due to endangering life. Hannah, I'm really sorry that you've experienced that, but I'm also really proud of you for typing that mm. in this box because um, it's that's a big thing to get to 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 to, to write. And um, so, well done, you. Can we all give? Can we give we give Hannah. Um, if there's not a walk in your area right now, as Abby points out, you can go onto one of the many Zooms that are being hosted. Um, but also we'd love people to start up walks in their areas. And so you have all the resources um, are available on the on the website. And Abby, did you find it an easy process? Or did you, I mean, obviously it's a frightening thing. And I know this myself from starting the first one. Yeah. I was like, what am I doing? um but it's given me so much back like I'm so glad I took those first steps yeah massively it's really it's really easy to set up um and I love my social media so I do loads of stuff on social media and particularly at the moment you know I've done the whole taking flyers out but you can't do that right now but it's really easy to set up and there's loads of people out there who will help as well and I I say to everybody if ever they want to set up a group and they want a bit of help with Canva or whatever, then I'm always around. Um, but yeah, it's 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 not difficult to to start one, and the pack's really good as well. That's on the website. And I think that you know that thing of in fact we're trying to do something at the moment, uh, which is a, like make a date with a mental health mate, and where you can just you know if you want to start, and I think it's probably something we'll try and keep up after lockdown, but you know where we're allowed people to say i live in dot 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 area and i want to meet up with you know i need to go for a walk with someone and you know you can sort of you can you can connect with each other um uh um right hang on there's so many questions there's loads aren't there <laughs> And it's like it does now here's another thing that what i love is peer support is um is is everywhere and mental health makes are not the only people doing it um mm -hmm. katie mancy has come and she has written that she co-hosts and volunteers for let's talk about loss a peer support charity for bereaved 18 to 35 year olds and they would love to collaborate do mental health makes have plans to collab with other charities to promote open discussions surrounding mental health katie co-hosts the norwich group if anyone is interested but we have groups all over the uk that's let's talk about loss um collabs katie we're always open for collabs and and um and you know for us mental health maze is about we just we just want to get the mental health conversation and the support out there bigger and bigger and bigger and it doesn't matter how we're doing it or who's doing it or what the the name of the war you know but obviously we 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 you know there's a mate we i just did a this girl cam thing with a woman who set up something called blaze trails which is peer support for new mums and they go hiking there's loads of stuff out there and um I, it would be great to get more information Katie that we could signpost people to on the website as well um right here we go um Camilla another Camilla uh logging onto a webinar has felt far more doable than meeting mm. in person I think that's something that lots of people will um will resonate with a lot of people 
Camilla says, I find it very hard to stay in the here and now. Instead, I find myself going through the plethora of what ifs of the next 10 plus years. How do you ground yourself and trust yourself that your decisions, actions today aren't life or death? It's okay if they're a mistake. Nothing has to be forever. Abby? Right. I, this is something I suffer with because I, um, with my anxiety, particularly with the social anxiety side of it, I do the, oh my God, what if, what if, what if? And I really make a concerted effort to do the whole CBT thing and to go, what's the absolute worst case scenario? You know, what if I make a mistake tonight on here and Brian is going, oh my God, you're, you know, what's the worst that's going to happen? <laughs> look like that, that's it. <laughs> what, you know, the worst thing that's going to happen is she's never going to speak. No, I'm joking. It's, <laughs> oh, it's really catastrophic thinking. Catastrophic okay, I thinking. Want, I just want, can we just do something here? Participants box here, right? Could you, if you're in the, can you, I want everyone in your ha in this ha in this room right now this webinar who always goes to the worst possible thing and thinks so and so is never going to talk to me again to raise their hand do that online ring oh look here we go oh my god oh my god <laughs> i love it literally almost there's 10 almost everybody what amazes me is there are 12 people that haven't raised their hand i'm like can we bring those people back for the next webinar <laughs> and get and ask them what their what their tips are like what their magic secret is <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's it's that whole catastrophizing thing but actually sitting yourself almost giving yourself a bit of a talking to and going okay what's the worst case scenario what's the best case scenario what's the what is the actual reality come on and also i think i um particularly when i used to drink and i didn't i wasn't a huge drinker but i would have such terrible anxiety after i'd been out and it would last for days. I would always say, let's say I got pissed on a Saturday night. I'd always say, by Wednesday, it's all gonna be a distant memory. And I'd always just, and it's the same with any sort of anxiety as well. I think you go, you know that in a couple of days time, what that big thing that you cannot stop thinking about right now is you're just gonna go, what, what was that? And it is, it's just going, it's not gonna stay forever. I have a friend who um, says to me that we suffer from this thing, which is um, we think we, we think we're I think I'm a piece of shit. The world revolves around. I don't know if you've heard that phrase. That's and brilliant. I think it's something that lots of us do. And there's another in recovery. We talk a lot about um, your ego is in. Uh, sorry, your self-esteem is in the basement and your ego is in the penthouse. And it's that thing. Oh, that, that's good. And I think it's really important. And I, one of the things that I have found that I've learned through 12 step programs is um, is right sizing. And we all feel that way. We from time to time, all of us feel like a piece of shit. The world revolves around. Yeah. But, but to know that out there right now, there are people walking along the street who are going, oh my God, so-and-so hates me. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Most people like, you know, and, and if so-and-so does hate you and isn't talking to you because of something that you don't even really know what you've done, that like, let, that, honey, that person is not, not for you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah, exactly. I mean? like, it's when you sit and, and unpick it, you go, oh yeah oh yeah but it's so uh, when you're in that moment though it's really difficult isn't it to go well do you know what that's their own problem and it's nothing to do with me but no. it, you have got to say that's yeah you've got to say that okay the other thing that this friend of mine says to me which was the most revelatory thing i'd ever heard was she said what other people think of you is none of your business so I was i've like, heard that oh! <laughs> It's my only business. Yeah, exactly. Of course it's my business. It's about me. <laughs> I nearly fainted. Uh, right. Sorry, we, we could go on and on and on here. I love these questions coming in. Kathy, um, Kathy suffers at oh Kathy, I get this totally. Oh yeah, me too. I suffer with anxiety, particularly when I wake up. Oh my god, another day. How can I get through the day? I totally get that. I'm like, oh my God, there's just so much day ahead of me. And Kathy wants to know what kind of things can I say to myself when I wake up that are more compassionate? I mean, I think we kind of dealt with it just there. It's that thing yeah. of going, it'll, it, also I think that you, you touched on it just for today, but it, you can just, just do it, just divide it up into hour by hour or half yeah. hour by half hour. I've and just discovered as well an app called Morning Pages. And I think it was Michelle Thomas who has written a book called My Shit Therapist. 
and other stories. And she started doing morning pages. Basically, you sit with your app and you write 250 words as soon as you wake up. Stream of consciousness is a bit like doing a journal. But for me, when I wake up and I've got anxiety, some of the gobbledygook I've come out with, but it gets it out of my brain into my phone or you can journal it or whatever. And it then just, then I can go, right, okay. Right, I've done that. And then I get on with my day. Massively helps. Um, I think that I do, I find also breaking down my day so I know exactly what I've got to do and then mm. and almost making a list so I can take myself through it. Like I literally have to hold my own hand like I'm a four year old child and go, now we're going this, but now we're going to the bathroom, Bryony, and we're going to brush our teeth. <laughs> Next. We're going to put some clothes on. Now we're going to go downstairs and out of the door and we're going to go to take our child to school. <laughs> and then after that, you will sit down at your desk and you will do back to back Zoom meetings for eight hours. <laughs> and then after that, you know, and I find that, I find that helps. And the getting out the door is a massive thing as well, isn't it? Oh, that door. <laughs> that door, you know, if you can just, this morning I was feeling crap and I just was like, I don't want to get out of bed yeah. but actually I'm going to go for a walk and I just went for a 20 minute walk this morning and the minute I got out the door and the fresh air hit me and everything else I was like oh actually I'm all right I'm yeah. okay I can I can deal with this now um I wanted to uh Daisy Jane uh has asked a question and she says how do I bur bury the shame of being diagnosed with borderline personality disorder I hold down a job. I have a middle class boyfriend. I'm a poor northerner. I'm struggling and I'm here to be part of the group. Now, Daisy, I'm not, <clears throat> I just want to tell you something, which is, I, I'm not going to re rejig, I'm not going to repeat my sperm egg story. But like, I read that and I see me like 10 years ago and the kind of all of the ways you're putting yourself down, you're a poor northerner. Um, you know, I, I just hold down a job. Like that's where you've got to like flip mm. it on its head. Like, no, you don't hold down a job. You manage to fucking do a job every day and that's fucking awesome. And borderline personality disorder. Like, again, I, we need to think, I think of mental illnesses as our brains where our brains are misfiring slightly, but they're doing it to try and protect us. So like, as I said, OCD, I've realized was a safety mechanism. My brain employed as a child to try to keep me safe, but it just didn't, you know, it is a misfiring. And, you know, you don't, you shouldn't have shame of having borderline personality disorder. You have a disorder like any other, right? So don't feel ashamed of yourself. You are fantastic. You are meant to be here. You've already added so much to this group and this webinar just by typing that out there. Um, and you've helped me just, I know Daisy Jane is out there feeling a bit shit like I do, do you know what I mean? About some of the things I feel shame about. And I go, oh, tonight I'll go to bed and go, it's okay because Daisy Jane and I and all the other people out there who feel shame about just being themselves and whatever life has thrown at them, we're all in this together, you know, and we're all there. And I think that's it. It's just meeting other people like you and knowing that, you know, it, it's okay to be you. It's more than okay. It's fucking brilliant. Um, again, I didn't really answer that, but um, I think you did. You did. There's no shame about it. There shouldn't um, be shame. Someone's just said, I found the way psychiatrists talk to you about BPD enhances the shame temple. That's interesting. And like, again, maybe that you two, Daisy Jane and the anonymous attendee, maybe you, you know, this is how we need to get people together. So you can talk more about that and ex ex exchange ideas and experiences and all of that other stuff. Um, God, there's so many questions coming in and we're running out of, of time um i want to do a shout out michelle uh can we get a shout out for the north in particular leeds and all our lovely members yes michelle shout out to michelle and leeds and lovely. um right okay so sorry a few have just come through on the chat and i was going to bring them up and then um she, Katie says if you had a broken leg yeah. you can hold the shame bpd deserves no shame it's true um uh, uh, and Anna McNay says, that's interesting, my psychiatrist wouldn't put BPD on my notes because he said it would cause problems for me in my life to have that stigma. So here we go, Daisy Jane, just by you sending that message out and putting mm -hmm. that in that box, we've already had the feedback from Anna who knows what it's like and someone else 
said you know what it's like and I and that's then that's you know don't feel shame about being you you are a, you tonight have helped loads of people right you've helped Anna Anna's helped you you know and this is this is this is why it's so important to talk about these things um right so um uh, I feel like we could go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Um, we could be here all night, couldn't we, chatting? Um, I'm just going to go through the sort of the few remaining questions. Um, someone said, Abby, and I think this is a really important question for, I mean, it's about boundaries. Mm. And I don't know about you. Well, I don't, you, you didn't have a cocaine addiction, but I didn't know what a boundary was until I got so clean and sober. I was like, you want me to draw a line around something? And I was like, do I then snort it? Um, but sorry. <laughs> Like, I have no idea about boundaries. Be like, put a boundary down. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and I now see boundaries are the most important thing you can have for your mental health. Yeah, they um, are hugely important. And mental health mates Andover. Hi, mental health mates Andover. Uh, say, you find it, Abby, you say you find it hard with boundaries with work life balance during lockdown. I'm feeling the same. How do you deal with this and create boundaries? <laughs> Well, I have done, um, I, in the summer, I did a course called Worthy with Donna Lancaster, who you know, Bryony, from The Bridge. Oh my God, I love that woman. Um, so Everyone I if you're on Instagram, go and follow Donna oh. at Donna Lanks. She's doing some freebies, actually. If anybody wants, um, I'll put them on my Instagram. I'll put a link in. She's doing some free ones at the moment. But she, um, I did a course called Worthy, which was a like eight session course. And we covered boundaries then. And that's when I realized that I had a massive issue with constantly saying yes to people, never saying no to people. Mm. And everything was massively to my detriment. So a lot of it, I think, is about confidence, particularly for me, is I am... Um, the course that I did has given me loads more confidence and realizing that I have a right to say no to people and that, which I never had, never ever had. Um, and just like things with work and the whole boundaries with start times, finish times, I have now just, it's all in my diary when I start and finish work because I don't work full time. And if people cross it, I just say to them, no, this isn't the time, check my diary. Mm -hmm. And it's, horrible to start with it's not easy at all because you feel like you're just being particularly if you are a yes person please, people pleaser like me you feel like you are just crucifying yourself but you know it's just it's practice it's the same with anything it's practice 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 i find that the best way for me to know that i need to put a boundary down the, the biggest sign that i need to put a boundary down is that i feel sick yeah, <laughs> so yeah. i feel sick saying no to something or something makes me really cross uh yes. the way someone you know when I go Whoa, like that I'm like you yeah. to put a boundary down and that's mm. that's 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 the, you know these are the maps by which we can live our lives in a healthy happy way and without yeah. we just build up resentments we get cross we get angry and um it's it's so important and so when I yeah when I was like when people were like you need to have boundaries i was like but I, where do i find boundaries yeah i'd be like and what, it's, and it's so find... difficult when you've had none but that but that clue for anyone watching who doesn't know what their boundaries are is that when if you are if it feels hard and it feels uncomfortable then there's probably a boundary there mm. so like i'm like you abby i found it very difficult to say no i find i'm a people pleaser i don't mm. tell people uh, i don't stand up for myself or i don't um you know, I don't, I, I, I don't, I, I just might, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell this person that this behavior was not right because I, I don't want to upset them. Yeah. But their, their well-being is more important than mine, basically. Of course, absolutely. And that's, and there, there's the big, like, big, like, hello, there's a boundary that you need to put in, which is that yeah. you need to be able to say, mm, that's not okay. And it's not comfortable, but it actually helps everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it does, because it makes people clear on what is acceptable. Mm. for you and for them and it takes practice but eventually they'll get they'll get the gist um lena uh, asked a question this is about boundaries again and then i then i think we'll wrap things up a bit but um lena says i want to ask about relationships with friends or family members who are probably suffering from but not open about their own mental health and this seems to have come to a head this year perhaps because of the lockdown and coronavirus situation 
how do you find ways to draw healthy boundaries for people who tend to see things as an us and a them norm even when they're clearly struggling hope that makes sense so i guess mm. what you're trying to say lena is that there are people that are not in a good place but they don't want to deem themselves to have a mental health issue um and i think the best thing to do that with that is just let them let them be like it's that thing yeah. of you can't and you know again i guess it's a boundary it is a boundary isn't it of of, yeah. of of don't spend time getting upset about it because they're they're in their part of their journey where they're you know and and maybe see that the act that you're doing of accepting that you are part of that us who experiences mental and as, as maybe see that you accepting that you will have a mental illness or a mental health issue is an incredible act of service for those people who are not yet ready to accept it and so just just see yourself as doing a little good it's an act of goodwill for those people who are not yet because they'll watch you and they'll see you and they'll do you know what i mean and, it, and in you being you lena as well you're breaking down the stigma and yeah. that's the stigma that they've got so brian is completely right in that it just is breaking it down bit by bit isn't it yeah i think this has gone well i think it's gone really well <laughs> I don't know, like uh, participants, hands up who thinks it's gone well. <laughs> Just to, oh, oh, that's fantastic. Maybe all of them. <laughs> Again, there's, yeah, like I'm like guys, yeah. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll, um, I would love to do this again. Um, and uh, it, it has it has flown by completely, and we will. Um, so just to talk through a few of our um our plans at mental health mates is that we, we we are hoping to go into a period of big growth and um and focusing uh you know on growing the walks and focusing on the walk leaders such as yourself abby um and uh, so we hope that in january we're going to be able to launch something oh look here we go lena quick share uh for MHM Bucks and also just so everyone knows we do on the Instagram uh, Jess and Ella who are our fantastic behind the scenes people put up every walk on um, um, on Instagram uh, and then they're all on the website as well but uh, yeah in January we're going to launch um, I don't there's my uh, Rebecca who is basically my uh, she's working with me I don't know if I'm allowed to announce this but I'm going to anyway um, we're going to start doing mental health mates at home in January so we'll have regular events like this where I will talk to other walk leaders or we'll get in some fantastic uh, mental health advocates and pick their brains and perhaps one of the first ones we should do should be on borderline personality disorder yeah. that seems to me to be something I'm really interested in learning more about and breaking down the stigma attached to that and why that's problematic so you know these are ways that we can all collaborate and work out what we need to be talking about and you know anyway i'm whispering but um bell says we need an mhm cumbria well bell how about you <laughs> come on come on uh and then maybe the year after that we can do a mental health mates tour where we all um you know go on tour and you as a mhm walk leader you do get great benefits such as an online christmas party <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like it's a bit like are you get a badge and a no I and mean, hopefully there will be more and there's so much we were so excited to tell you all about um that's coming up some amazing things that um our wonderful uh rebecca who has started working with us has uh has has got the ball rolling on and um i just want to thank uh abby for coming tonight thank you uh, and chatting with me and, and and listening to me wish her away um i'd like to thank my daughter for shutting up um <laughs> i don't know if anyone could hear there was some like serious like frozen singing going on in the next room uh i'd like to thank jess and ella who are our wonderful um points uh, uh of contact for all the water leaders um uh, and listen, Justine in New Zealand, thank you for coming That's and thanks awesome. for setting one up in New Zealand. She says, what you just said about being worthy and setting boundaries just made so much sense to me about a traumatic event. 
and inappropriate behavior or experience which caused some PTSD. Thank you so much, ladies. I could cry. Oh, I could cry now. Yeah, I can so let's all cry like have a cry like that's you know now i've got mascara on for the first time in ages no oh, I, I haven't i haven't i was as i said earlier the problem with putting makeup on is eventually i've got to take it off and i can't no, it's horrible um but crying when i was a kid i don't know if anyone else this resonates with them but um when i was a kid and i cried my mum or you know and i think this is very similar it's a very british thing would say don't cry don't be silly and now when I, uh, when my daughter cries, I don't, I just have to stop myself from mm. saying that. And I say to her, do cry, let it all out. Yeah. And that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna leave you all with tonight is that, um, oh, Jess wants us to do a group picture. So I'm gonna ask everyone to come in if you're okay with that. Um, and um, how do I do this, Jess? I was going to invite everyone to be uh, a panelist and then you can come in and we were going to try and do a um, group picture, but I don't know how I do that. Uh, You've got an invite button down on the participants bit. I don't know. I don't have one. No. Oh, invite. Hang on. In oh, no, that's not working. Um, Jess. I <laughs> oh, hang on. Oh no! It's I just I just texted Jess. Help! <laughs> <laughs> I have to. Go, I would have to manually go through and invite every single person to be a panelist, which is going to take a long time, given that there's forty six of us. So I think maybe that's something that we might have to. Um, oh, hang on. Who can share? We'll get it sorted for next time, everyone, and then we can do a group picture and, and feel like we're all really we are all together, even though we can't see you. Um, and also there are there is there is some um, there is technology here, which means we can bring some of you in to ask questions live and stuff like that in future. So um, thank you for bearing with me. I was going to say ask me as I get to grips with this technology. Uh, yeah, and if you want to send your screenshots, we can share them on our Instagram feed. So tag mental health mates and we will definitely get it sorted for next time. Thank mm -hmm. you, everyone. I hope you're OK. And if you're not, please tell someone about it and um, check out mentalhealthmates.co.uk for walks and our Instagrams at mental health mates. And then, and, and then in the chat box, there are all everyone else's um, mental health mates groups. Um, Right. Okay. Thank you, Abby. Thank Everyone you. have a lovely evening. Take care.